what inspired me to, uh, to get into research in general. I think this is a very, there is not like a very specific point in time where I can pin it down and tell you that's the moment when I said, okay, I wanna be this or that. But I know that since I was young, I grew up with the six sisters. So I grew up in a very feminine uh, atmosphere and they all encouraged me just to study, study hard, study, study hard. This is something I used to hear each day, three times before the meal. Before each meal, I would hear this, this phrase. And then later on, I think I got inspired by, by some of my university professor who really inspired me. He didn't inspire me to be a social scientist or researcher, but they inspired me to, to, to seek knowledge in general. Uh, currently, I am I'm social science, in, uh, this is a big field, so currently I'm working on uh, 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 science uh, policy and uh, science advice, and mainly in the field of higher education and adult education. But before that, I used to work, because as I said, I grew up like in a very feminine uh, uh, context, so my PhD was about gender, uh, gender and media and science in the Middle East and North Africa. And uh, as I kept uh, uh, growing up, and then I did a postdoc in the US on uh, migration and migration border and migration policy. And the reason why I shift to migration because at some point I realized that also I am a migrant coming from a migrant family who migrated to Europe for many years. So I also wanted to reflect some of the uh, the challenges, aspiration that migrant population is facing, especially in, in North Africa. So I, I switched to, even though I kept in social science and like policy, but I switched into migration and I also focused more on female migration. <clears throat> and for the last three years, I've been uh, working on uh, policy in, uh, uh, in higher education because I believe that uh, uh, one of the uh, determinant factor that, in, that could influence the, the present and also the future of any society is education and youth. And because we in Africa, we have like a, a very invaluable capital, human capital, which is the youth, I think we need to invest in them. And the best investment we can bid on them is education. So that's why now I'm working more on education policy and, uh, and the youth. What are the challenges or like what need to be done in order to, uh, to uh, get rid of like uh, transcend the challenges facing Morocco, which is Morocco, which is just one example of, uh, of uh, the other African countries. And uh, currently, and uh, since 2015, uh, we're working on a, a, a continental project called Closest Africa. And one of the objective uh, one of the objectives of this uh, project is to uh, uh, map the states of young uh, researchers and early career researchers in Africa in order to understand what are the challenges they are facing, and what is the pipeline, and among the other issues we are trying to investigate is uh, cross-cutting issues such as gender and ethnicity and race in Africa, and what are the barriers that maybe take this young researchers stray from research. So uh, one of the, uh, or among the challenges that we are facing in Morocco, and I think in other African countries, especially at the educational level, is um, leadership and management and infrastructure. Uh, but I would put leadership on the top, or like in the center, because I think we are, uh, we are suffering really from a, um, uh, I wouldn't say weak, but inefficient, uh, inefficient uh, leadership uh, strategy uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, improving uh, educational system and performance in our countries. Morocco uh, invests a lot on education. Maybe it's the second uh, country in the MENA region investing in education, and yet our educational system is still not uh, producing or delivering what is being bid on. And here, there is not a problem of, uh, of funding because there is so much money invested uh, on education. But the problem is with leadership and governance. And as I said, 
uh, infrastructure. So I think that maybe the same thing applies to many other African countries. And uh, this does not mean that in Morocco we don't have some uh, best practices. We do have them. Uh, but what we need, we need also to learn from other African countries who also have some other good practices. So maybe if we join efforts and synergies among other African countries, we learn from our mistakes and also share our, our successes. Maybe not now, not this year, but maybe in the medium term, maybe we will come up with a better uh, educational system that delivers uh, to the country and to the, to the people. Mm -hmm. To encourage young people to pursue research in an environment wherein the idea of research and academia is not a profitable uh, uh, profession is a really very challenging and daunting task. It's true, uh, there is this idea which is somehow a misconception, but there is some truth in it because it's true we in Africa uh, to do research and work in academia and be a teacher is really very difficult task to bring like the, to bring all these components in one table because when you start as a young uh, let's say a, a faculty member so you're bombarded with a lot of course loads and corrections so you don't really have ample time to do research and if you want to do research then you cannot work and if you cannot work so it's like it's always like catch 22 uh, uh, game uh, what I would uh, say to uh, encourage young people is that they really need to have perseverance and determination and also they need to have passion. If you really have passion, because uh, the, 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 the concept of wealth is very subjective. I don't know what do you mean by the term wealth. For me, wealth is being f f feeling like self-fulfillment. And self-fulfillment for me is when I'm doing research, but not only for having it published, but also when I see it like reaching out people. Uh, an example on that, the Africa Science Week that we implemented this year, uh, uh, it, it was a moment in which for me I saw, uh, or I felt this feel self-fulfillment moment when I saw people like interacting and appreciating science, when I saw young people in Morocco uh, um, appreciating and also trying to show what they know about science. So I think this is something that, that for me, this is a moment of wealth, you know? So wealth, uh, of course, I understand, yeah, we are talking about material wealth, but um, uh, I don't think that's the only thing required or like that's the only thing that people or researchers uh, need to pursue when they're doing research in academia. Uh, there are many other things uh, that you can uh, get out of uh, the, the research and academic field, which is self-fulfillment and appreciation and like devotion, uh, sharing with your community. Of course, you don't, you don't have to be necessarily a doctor to be appreciated within your community. You could, you could be many things in research and you could do many other things apart from having like a very direct impact because sometimes Sometimes me as a social scientist, there were moments where I questioned what I'm doing and to what extent it really delivers any impact to the community, but it does in a way or another. Uh, I think uh, in 2008, I was asked this question during an interview with the Fulbright Committee because I was submitting an application for a joint PhD uh, scholarship. And one of the committee members asked me, where do you see yourself in five years from now? And I told him, well, in five years from now, I will have my fifth book published and I will have my own department, my research department opened in the university, uh, Mohammed Five University. None of that happened actually after five years. So uh, when I remember that, I see how innocent I was, uh, but also how ambitious I was also. So um, since then, I'm very precocious about answering this question so that uh, it's good to set goals and target, but also sometimes you have to be uh, realistic. In five years from now, I can tell you what I'm doing right now and what I want to see uh, achieved th uh, through what I'm doing right now. Uh, right now, we're working on this Glossus Africa project. And this Glossus Africa project is one sequence 
of a chain of projects that we started within the Global Young Academy. Uh, the first one was the precursor study, which, is, which was like GLOSIS study. And this, through this study, we wanted to pilot our survey in order to see whether we can use this survey in order to collect data about young scientists and early researchers around the world in order to identify their challenges, ambitions, and the obstacles in order to inform policies based on fact-based funding that we can communicate to policymakers. So that was the first phase. And then we moved to the second phase in which we did the ASEAN the GLOSIS study and we finished it in 2015 with the publication and recommendations. Now we are working on the uh, GLOSIS Africa study that we're hoping to finish it by the end of 2018, 2019 maximum. And that would allow us to compare the state of African young scientists with the ASEAN young scientists. And our project by 2020 is to uh, implement or do the same project but in the Latin American region. So I hope that by then we'll have the uh, outcome of the, uh, the GLOSIS Africa project, uh, some good recommendations that could be taken seriously by our African policy makers and decision makers. So that's one project I'm working on right now. The other project inspired me through the Africa Science Leadership Program that I participated in two years ago. And uh, through that program, I wanted to implement something called the Arab science leadership program because unfortunately uh, there is a region in the world which is like nowadays is being kind of neglected which is the Middle East. I am from North Africa and people usually refer to me I am from the MENA region which is North Africa Middle East. However, I see that a lot of scientists in the Middle East region are being left out uh, from all those amazing and very competitive and promising projects. So my, my aim is to implement the idea of Africa Science Leadership Program at the Arab region, which I'm calling right now the Arab Science Leadership uh, Program. Uh, uh, it's been like uh, 14 months that I'm working on the designing and the conceptualization of this project. And we're at the phase of looking for funders and partners. And I'm sure it's not gonna be easy, but it's not impossible. I'm sure it's gonna be implemented at some moment. My work within the GYA, I joined the GYA in 2014, uh, and uh, we've done so many projects and uh, training and uh, uh, initiatives and uh, uh, organizational and uh, partnership activities in different parts of the world. Uh, my uh, two main projects that I worked with or like on within the GYA was uh, I was the leader of the uh, science education working group, uh, sci uh, youth science education working group. I worked on that group for two years and a half. And then I launched the idea of science diplomacy. Uh, and uh, uh, I was so happy because in 2016, in our annual meeting, we launched a working group called science diplomacy. And uh, this, the, the other project, uh, uh, which I just mentioned, the Glossus Africa project. Other than that, uh, I'm also, I, I served for three or four years as the selection committee of the Global Young Academy, and I contribute in different ways uh, uh, to the Global Young Academy's daily and uh, regular activities.